Uh, hi guys, thank you so much uh, for being here, for taking the time to, to give us this exclusive one-on-one -on -one interview for, for my channel. Uh, these guys are the designers of the LEGO Ideas A-Frame Kevin set. So I would like you all to introduce yourselves, your role uh, in this design, and maybe two sets that uh, LEGO fans might be familiar with that you guys have, uh, have yeah, worked yes. on. Yeah. Hello, I'm in the back. Uh, my name is Jordan. I'm the creative lead on LEGO Ideas, uh, but I used to do a lot of model building, famous for the sea car from LEGO Movie, probably, and either the snow speeder or the Y-Wing from uh, Star Wars, the ECS versions that came out. Uh, that's probably what I'm most proud of, anyway. Put it that way. It's a tower yeah, yeah. That's a good one too. Um, I'm Justin Ramston. I'm a senior model designer here at the LEGO Group. Um, and uh, yeah, I was one of the, the three model designers on the project. Uh, the other three, Ollie and Wunsa, who sadly can't be here, but Ollie is here, so that's great. Uh, two things that uh, you might know me from Strange Things and The Hogwarts Castle. Cool. Strange Things. Will. I'm going to sit in my hair. <laughs> As uh, just alluded to, uh, yeah, my name's Ollie. Uh, I'm a model designer uh, uh, on Lego Ideas. Um, uh, previously, I've done um, Sesame Street and the Jazz Quartet with uh, Justin also. Yeah. yeah, and I'm Kenza. I'm the graphic designer on this project, and I'm fairly new. So what I have going on for me is uh, some friend skews, some Minecraft, and uh, the new Avatar that's come, coming out as well. Uh, Avatar sets and lots more that I can't reveal. But yeah, there you go. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Thank you so much. That's cool. Uh, so, yeah, this one is for you, Jordan, being the, the design lead. So uh, what made you guys choose the A-Frame cabin over the other LEGO Ideas submissions? And maybe briefly explain to people what the LEGO Ideas theme is all about. Yeah, so I'll start with that one. LEGO Ideas is where fans can submit any ideas they want. Uh, and if they get enough votes, namely 10,000, then they get uh, put into a review process that we then take with a lot of different stakeholders uh, to kind of funnel it down to picking, you know, one or two or perhaps even four, which is what we did in one of our previous uh, announcements, which was quite surprising for a lot of people. Yeah. But it was awesome to be able to realize that many. Um, I actually joined the ideas team kind of midway through this project. But the reason that this one was kind of picked was you know one we we haven't done a lot of models in this style like these very cozy uh cabins and things like that we typically you know we see a lot of modular buildings and things in icons but we don't do anything really that that takes place out in the wilderness and things so it just really stood out as something like really striking both from a visual point of view but then with all the amazing details that andrea the fan designer was able to incorporate uh and then the team did a really amazing job in translating his idea into a, a final set that um, I hope everyone really likes. I'll go straight for the B questions that have been being asked uh, online, which is like there's major changes in regards to comparing the, the final model, which looks amazing, by the way, and the original submission, namely the trees were one of the, the biggest ones that people uh, pointed out and also the somewhat modern look of the cabin, uh, whereas the original was more more like uh, like uh, dated uh, kind of design. So, what what were the thoughts behind making those significant changes? Hopefully, the the model still remained the same. It's still an A-frame cabin, so that's the first thing that we yeah. we wanted to stick to from yeah. Andrew's original submission. Um, of course, yeah, the trees uh, bring up a lot of love and a lot of hate. Um, we love them. Andrea loves them, and most of the reviews love them. But uh, for those that hate, uh, feel free to buy more of the set and you can make bushier trees if you'd like. But sadly, <laughs> uh, we had to do what we had. Um, it's mainly because Andrea's trees, although bushy, um, they were slightly unbuildable. Uh, so obviously we try and rework things. But obviously with those reworks, it brings up a price. I mean, it's no surprise to, to obviously you, Tiago, and yeah, some of the viewers at home, right, that um, sometimes each piece costs something. And so if you wanted a bushier tree, would you rather have one sort of big tree um, or more of a scenery and environment, more animals and, and just more parts to build your own mocks at home? Um, Oli has a, one of the, the first examples that were of an Andrea tree uh, in his hand. So we did try it and we really, really did try it um, to, to get it through, but it just wasn't feasible. Um, so, yeah, I recommend if you, if you like bushier things, then, uh, yeah, 
pad it out with my own collection at home. Um, but uh, as for the, the the modern take, I don't know if you uh, you put some words to that. Yeah, so I mean, uh, uh, Andrea's uh, original model um, kind of went for kind of a, quite a hunting um, focused roots, uh, kind of uh, embedded quite deeply in kind of uh, yeah, kind of hunting culture and that kind of thing. And we kind of know that doesn't really gel with everybody, so we decided to go for this more kind of modern, uh, kind of aspirational kind of uh, ho- hoogler, uh approach, really. It's also we've been like most of the world, right, trapped. Uh, for two and a half to three years right so that idea of this escapism and almost like a digital detox really brought at least myself to the project and also Winter and and Ollie right um is this this getaway from from home and how we can build that romantic getaway um in in the woods the cabin in the woods that's really sought after and really aspirational so yeah that was more from us rather than going to a yeah post-apocalyptic uh wasteland hunter's (laughs) cabin um which could appeal to some but yeah, definitely not to, to a few of us. For sure. Now, being three model designers working on the set, how, how exactly does that work? Because from my experience, like I was a single designer on a single model. So, okay, it's pretty much straightforward, but like three model designers in a single model, how did that work for you guys? I mean, Ollie and Winston did the work. I was just the hype man. Okay? So the PR, the PR face, okay. no, I'm joking. Um, it was more <laughs> a, a relay race. I mean, we were very, very busy. Um, with our normal jobs um, and ideas obviously had this opportunity to make a log cabin uh, or an a-frame cabin and uh, yeah we jumped at the chance but obviously couldn't do that in our day-to-day so this almost became this uh, relay race of okay you work on one bit and then after a few hours then I'll take over and do this and then throughout the night and the days and yeah weeks and weekends we were tinkering away uh, just to get something done a because we were all super passionate um, I mean, once as a trained architect, so for for him, it's super cool to uh, you know try and work out all the different angles and the the structures inside. And then yeah, you know, Ollie loves all the little details, so he'd bring details by. Or I really love the landscaping and, and the storytelling. So yeah, how can we sneak in? So actually, although it almost looks like a hindrance to have three designers at the beginning, actually it's working with three really great friends and obviously graphic designers as well. And also Ashwin, who did the illustrations on the covers, and Jordan. So it's like one big hoogly family much like the, the the characters in here um and like a lot of lego products that we make it's a team effort and this was yeah extra awesome that so many people could actually get involved and share that passion that's awesome and so what were some of the biggest challenges when designing uh the the a firm cabin um so i mean one of the big ones that wounds are kind of um kind of dove straight into was the the angle uh kind of that, that, that iconic a-frame shape um there is there's kind of a um uh, a, a few angles that we we could have used, and we kind of uh, were really fortunate to kind of settle on this one, where um, the Lego system, as you know, kind of um, <laughs> only has certain certain angles within it, um, and kind of certain elements within those angles. So we kind of really uh, played with them, uh, kind of explored heavily, um, and then worked on this one. Uh, I forget the angle. I wish Windsor was here now. <laughs> <laughs> It's, it's a great, it's, it's one of the best ideas. Just yeah. favorite angle, actually. It's good. It's passed on for generations. <laughs> yeah. He loves it. But yeah, I guess that's the, the thing, right? The the product is called the A-Frame Cabin in stocks now. And uh, yeah, it's um, without that iconic angle, then yeah, we'd be nothing. So yeah, trying to work that out was was the hardest. And then from there, it was the trees. The trees were the second. And then we sort of had a list of, of what we wanted to do. Obviously, always looping in Andrea. And whenever we came up with something cool, we were desperate to show him. And I think that's one of the the coolest things is I'm in awe with all his mocks that he creates online and and a lot of people are. And so, yeah, he sort of made us love the hobby again, even though we love it now. It's like it's a breath of fresh air because you're like, oh, my goodness, he used this part in a really exciting way. How can we put this into an official set? So you'll notice like all the the paneling um, on the original submission is all lifted because obviously he doesn't press the, yeah. the bricks down or elements down correctly. Of course, we can't do that on the outside. Um, I mean, if you if you have the model at home, then we're not stopping you from lifting up the, the parts yourself. Um, but on the front and the, the the back of the model, we also wanted to get that rustic look of the, the higgledy-piggledy nature of the model. Um, so trying to figure out all that different nature was super fun to, to pay homage to his models, but also like the fishing store or the tree house, which he really loved as well. Yeah, uh, I saw that. The 
the walls uh, back and front with uh, the off plate measurements are, are really really nice a really nice detail and talking about uh, uh, the fan designer how how involved uh, was he in the in the design process jordan uh, i mean like with every ideas model the fan is as involved as they want to be you know we give them that freedom like do you want to have calls every week or every month or you know it's it's really up to them because at the end of the day they also have jobs and, and other things that they have to do. Um, but Andrea was really great to work with. Like we would just say, hey, just message him on Teams or email and just say, we need to show you something. We've got some cool updates. Can you jump on a call? Uh, and he was very open to that and, and really like, you know, whenever we had challenges or, or cool details and stuff, he really uh, took to that and was very understanding and uh, why we did certain things. So I think from my side, he was really great to work with. Um, and he's been a really great advocate for the process as well. Yeah, and just seeing the how ecstatic he is yeah. now that he's done the hand, the setting his hands. I saw a, a Facebook post the other day where uh, on the social medias are available, but like a where he built a um, like an A-frame out of all the boxes, and that <laughs> is just incredible. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and uh, yeah, I guess that's that that just proves to us that we've done something great. If he loves the the submission or loves the end product as much as we do then yeah we're, we're doing something right uh kenza uh, on your uh the uh work on on the set uh, on the graphic design uh things uh what what were uh what were the the things that you do like the most and are there any exclusive prints on, on the set and talk us a little bit about the minifigures as well but maybe uh let's start with the the exclusive prints uh, that this set has Yes, of course. Um, I think the first one that I really, really like is that we kind of translated one of his earlier um, submissions of uh, Blue Cottage with a really cute blue car as well. Uh, we took that and made that into a small... It's inside. Yeah, into a small yeah. painting that's above the bed. Um, yeah. So that was also very challenging, like kind of like make this recognizable as the Blue Cottage um, and put that into vectors, into a, a smaller version. That's very exclusive for this one. Um, then we also have the Emperor Moth. It's the first time that we're printing something on uh, the yellow um, butterfly moth. Um, so we had kind of a discussion between all of us, kind of like what, what kind of wildlife do we want to put into the set? Uh, we really want to make this this like ex extremely beautiful wildlife kind of like feature. So it had to have a lot of animals but also insects and we'd never done a print on this uh, element uh, you said it has been used in Encanto uh, earlier but without a print um, and we wanted it to be set in a northern setting um, so we've done a lot of brainstorming <laughs> in regards to what kind of like moth or butterfly or whatever we wanted to put in there and we ended up with the emperor moth very beautiful very fall like um, so those are the exclusives nice and uh uh, Justin was just mentioning about the the instruction booklets, so you also did the 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 covers for those. Was that the case? That was uh, another graphic designer. He did an amazing job okay. illustrating uh, the book sets here. Okay, yeah. and that, and then throughout this whole little yeah. pro packs. Um, yeah. so Ashwin did a, a fantastic job. Absolutely. Um, yeah. And also that just shows that like how many other people are involved, right? And and how we want to get people involved. Um, Ollie and I came straight off the the jazz quartet onto this model and for the jazz quartet we had maria salgada mm -hmm. who um did some amazing illustrations for the the building instructions oh, yeah. and so we, we just wanted to show uh, and promote other lego designers a but not only their themselves but also their skills because not only are we we good at lego model building or graphic design we can also do illustration we can do whatever um so yeah by promoting that it just shows that there's not just yeah us for it's 400 designers yeah. out there so <laughs> Yeah, in the other wall. I'm pointing to the other building. So. Yes, for sure. And uh, talking about the minifigures as well, uh, and I'm assuming, Kenza, you were involved as well. And what was the thinking behind like the minifigures? Because if we look at the back of the box, it seems like somebody messed the photos. But uh, reading from like the press release, the the idea is that you can actually mi mix and match uh, the different uh, minifigure parts. So what was the thought uh, about that? Yeah, well, we wanted to give that freedom of uh, creating your own story and making it uh, very inclusive in a sense that you it's very personal to you, like what kind of relationships these minifigures have with each other, what kind of outfits do they have, what kind of hair do they have. So we wanted to promote that through the box as well, that 
you're kind of like the storyteller here. And then we're creating the setting uh, for you. And we created two new um, torsos for this one. So pretty much two new apparels, uh, a blue sweater okay. and uh, the red jacket. Um, okay. and that's also inspired by, you know, very like outgoing Fildraum kind of like situation, um, but also Northern like patterns on the on the sweater. And so, yeah, we just wanted to kind of like communicate hoogly and wildlife and hiking. Um, yeah, and I think we did an yeah, yeah, amazing. Yeah. Yeah. And I think, yeah, you also get two indoor and two outdoor outfits mm -hmm. as well. So you can play out where you want the characters to live and to some stay in the cottage to the others go on the, the canoe out into the wilderness. Um, yeah, we've we've played around with mix and matching heads before, like especially on the ideas, there's a football table. Um, but yeah, we yeah. weren't so keen on having decapitated heads around a, a cottage, but still wanted to come out <laughs> and just mix exactly. and match nature. Um, so by providing the extra torsos, you can either, yeah, hide them somewhere and then use them when you want to put the figures out into the wilderness or wrap them up warm. So when they're having a, a hoogly time by the record player or uh, mm -hmm. making a cup of cocoa and typing on the typewriter. Uh, talking about like mixing and matching the, the nature, I can see that the side builds uh, like perfectly match uh, each other and it doesn't feel like it was just luck, you know, so uh, could you tell us uh, a bit about that? Yeah, so uh, I mean, it was luck, so there you go. <laughs> <laughs> ah, nice. Um, no, we really wanted this, A, this destination um, to, to travel to. So you've got the, the canoe or the kite. I can't remember. It's a canoe. Yeah. It's a canoe, right? It's open, right? Um, so canoe that you could sail to if you wanted to, to take your figures on an adventure. Or you can switch them around. We like the idea of this modularity. Um, and also of a way of carrying it. The model gets quite large when the, the sides are attached. So by having this yeah. um, easy break point, then that means it's easier to transport and also to get inside. But yeah, we could have the... The trees on this side if you want or you can move them to the other side um it's your cabin you decide um but we like this idea that yeah you can uh you can take them off and display them at your desk at work if you want to go on an adventure or you can uh yes have the cabin stand alone if you want to put it into your city layout or i mean also, also to make new modules as well like yeah. uh andreas has, has such a, a, a wide body of um different cabins that are in different seasons, different locations, like maybe you're inspired to take one of those and kind of build upon it, build, build it out. Yeah, we can see this being the, the A-frame standard. I want to frame back that right now. So uh, yeah, maybe there's a contest that comes around, or maybe not, but maybe there's one for your blog. <laughs> Uh, yeah, talking about the, the fan designer, I noticed like a few Easter eggs uh, even uh, within the set and uh, Ken's already mentioned the painting above the bed, but do you want to tell us uh, a little bit about those yeah, Easter so, eggs uh, and, I mean, and I mean, fun details about been, the, the it's set? It's been super fun to, um, to put all these Easter eggs into the set, um, like all Lego sets, right, where we can try and sneak what we can, um, especially related to Andrea. So. I don't want to spoil too many, but uh, the, new to now, if you uh, if you want if you don't want it to be spoiled, right? Um, but uh, the, one of the first things you build is the Italian flag, so the the tricolor that they have in the in the base, and that was the base for our model. He's the the first Italian fan designer, and that was really cementing uh, Andrea's mark on the the Lego Ideas platform. Um, Andrea is really known for a lot of fantastic builds. One of them is a, a car garage. So there's a little uh, gas canister um, in octane right. color. So I'll, I'll make, but this is one of the canisters that he has in his garage um, on his builds. Uh, the ideas um, platform as itself, it's celebrating, well, this is set number 46. Um, so we may hit 50 soon, and that may be the same time that we, uh, we're also on the market. So we wanted to celebrate that ideas fandom. And uh, yeah, to do that, we wanted to put some throwbacks to other ideas models. So there's the typewriter, okay. there's the tree house, there's also the uh, blacksmith uh, shop is um, is referenced in there. There's obviously the painting about the bed. There's a few. Let the yeah. builders find out what we <laughs> should discover. Uh, the big question. Uh, in the back, uh, the car door element in white, is it a towel or toilet paper? It's a car door, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it, it just shows, uh, I guess we, we learned from Andrea, and I mean, we've been doing it for a while, like NPU, right? Um, and exactly. like, I think that just cements, especially in the ideas platform that we can do this. We can we can take parts that people know and love, such as the car door, and place them into, um, place them into models in new and exciting ways. So 
yes, it is a card law, but it can be open to inter interpretation to however you want it to be. Um, I think, yeah, I, I mentioned earlier and somewhere, I can't remember, where it's redemption, because when I designed the Sanctum Sanctorum set, so 76218, um, then I put the other side of the door in. And so as Lego designers, we try and put equal amounts of left and right things, yeah. so be that plates or wedges or, or slopes. And it gave me sleepless nights. Like I was tossing and turning all the time when the, the Sanctum was released that the fridge <laughs> is uh is only one-sided um so i got my redemption in putting it in this set so if there's one reason to buy the a-frame cabin is for that door and then buy the sanctum to go with it to, <laughs> to get the other side <laughs> that's a good one so another um, question before we we start we have got ashwin here he's just joined Join. so uh <laughs> remember for our camera. yes do you want to introduce yourself ashwin like what was your role uh in the in the model and uh two sets that the fans might uh know you from. Well, yeah. Um, so, hi, my name is Ashwin. Um, I'm also a graphic designer, just like Kenza. So, normally, in the, when I work with sets, I work on the minifigures, on the stickers, decorated elements, that kind of stuff. But with this set, uh, I had the opportunity to do something new, something extra. So, I actually illustrated the, um, the front covers of the BIs. It was really great uh, to do that because um, nowadays, in the whole products uh, of, of of new products, we are talking about experiences, and you are starting with the BI if you if you uh, if you're building um, a new a new Lego product. But what do you do after it when you're done uh, building? And with these uh, with these building instructions, you can actually now keep them, or you can hang them on your wall to have that extra connection to the to this new set that you uh, that you have purchased. So that's that's the idea that we wanted to do with these uh, building instructions. Um, Great job. The sets those. that I worked on with, <laughs> with Justin as well on the Sanctum Centauri. Um the Lion Knights Castle from uh, last year with all the, the knight figures um, and a lot of icons products. New and exciting things coming soon. Oh, yeah, for <laughs> sure. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's next time. For sure, for sure. Um, so, a lot of people asked about there's four minifigures, but only one double bed. Uh, so, where are people sleeping? Under the stars. <laughs> Under the stars, yes. Yeah. That's a good one. So, if you look at the, um, the amazing uh, animation that was uh, released when we, when we announced the set, um, there's, a, there's a bit of a narrative there. Um, so, go and take that. Go and, uh, go and check watch that. Oh, yeah, yeah. Check it out. Yeah. Isn't it two hours long? Yeah, go yeah. watch the two hours. It's, it's, up, it's up here. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Good one. Good one. <laughs> you got it. You got it. I so, guess, uh, before I forget the other the other Easter egg, well, I guess it's not Easter egg, right? It's, we want it to, to be a record-breaking uh, Lego set. So we put as many Thor's hammers in as possible. Uh, so it's the yeah. ultimate worthy set. So I guess that's, uh, that's also an Easter egg in itself. And that's a cool piece usage, of course, and PU, and uh, like a, a cool detail that you did, that you kept from the original idea. So I think it's something that fans will uh, for sure appreciate. I for sure did, and it was uh, a very cool building uh, technique, if we can, if I can say so myself. But the thing I really want to know is that in the building instructions, uh, you guys have like the the team photo, and there's these gigantic uh, Lego items. So are those real? And where can I get uh, when I where can I get them? <laughs> Hundred percent real, and you have to come back <laughs> to see them. Yeah, yeah for, for the viewers at home. Spoiler alert! <laughs> but they're super yes. super cool. Um, a few years ago, we did uh, the rebuild the world um, TV commercials. They're still still running now. Yeah. And uh, I was lucky enough to be on the the set and. and got to handle these props. Uh, so I may or may not have been uh, able to beg, borrow and steal them back into my suitcase. And we had them to pose with and then return them uh, before anyone noticed. <laughs> nice. Very good. And, and yeah, I think a, a final question is, uh, is like a, a tip uh, that each of one would give like a quick tip for aspiring uh, Lego designers. This is something that always comes up. So what would you guys advise for people aspiring to be Lego designers like yourselves? Um, you mean specifically any type of Lego designer or like an ideas fan designer? Uh, it could be like a uh, model designer usually, I would say, and maybe graphic designer for Ashwin and, and Kenza. I think I have one and that's doesn't matter what your education is. You can come from any kind of background mm -hmm. uh, as long as you kind of have some of the skills and some experience and really want to do it. 
then go for it. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's about that drive and like, you know, it's it's if you're passionate about it, you can make it happen. Mm -hmm. You know, just keep building. Like it, it sounds cliche, but you just keep building, keep doing graphics, keep yeah. sculpting or, you know, whatever kind of area you would like to to further your skills in. And it could happen. You just need to, you know, apply yourself to to that um, skill set. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. I guess for for me, it's um, build the stuff you don't know. I mean, I've been very fortunate to to work on Yellow Submarines and Apocalypsebergs and all these awesome products, but there has been some models that I've designed which are maybe unknown to me or less favorable in, in my eyes. And um, although we, we came up with the best things at the end of it, um, it was a journey of, of researching and learning and, and building and, and figuring out. So A-frame cabins, I absolutely love them, but I wasn't too familiar beforehand so it was a great chance to actually immerse myself into that world so if you're so used to building spaceships have a go trying to build a pirate ship or if you want to build a castle have a go building a botanical um anything goes and as lego designers we have to be varied in our skill set so i think that just enhances your your building repertoire good one i would say uh, don't take it too serious um always keep the the child sparkle within you and uh Keep trying, you know, not everything works out uh, the first time. So even if you're applying, um, keep applying. Um, there was always many opportunities to come. And uh, but yeah, don't lose your child sparkle, I would say. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, and I would say um, it's a real job. Uh, <laughs> if, if I knew yeah. as a kid growing up that this 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 was a job, mm -hmm. um, it's yeah it's um and and believe that you can do it as well um lego is 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 in unique the, the design of lego is unique in that there are such a broad set of skills um that is, that are um not only academic but also creative as well we have we have everyone from sailors to lawyers uh who are now lego designers <laughs> so it really is open to anybody you don't have to know, know everything like yeah. Yeah. yeah 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 you can learn on uh, like uh, along the way so and i mean yeah we're constantly learning new techniques yeah. that, like oh how do we build a, an a-frame cabin or how do we build a tree to look as bushy as possible mm -hmm. very good well guys thank you so much i think this will wrap up uh, the the interview thank you so much for for having me for providing also this uh, cool info about the a-frame uh, cabin coming real soon uh, for fans around the world and yeah and let's hope that we can meet uh next time for an upcoming lego idea set who knows thank you so much thank, thank you so much happy building yeah. a round of applause <laughs> <laughs>